Whether you're planning on building a new gaming PC and need to pick the right power supply for it, or you're just upgrading your GPU and want to make sure that it'll actually work with your current power supply, this video is for you. Picking the right wattage is incredibly important, as you can easily run into the overcurrent protections, or worse, especially on cheaper power supplies, you can start to have degraded power which can damage literally every component in your system. So why is it so hard to get the right wattage? Well, custom computers are just complicated. Two systems can need completely different power supplies. One with an i9 and a 4090 will need a considerably higher wattage than an i5 and a 4060. In recent years, we've also discovered a new problem, which is that when a graphics card fully switches on to start rendering a game, it often draws an incredibly high amount of current, known as a current spike, which, if your power supply isn't suitably oversized, can trip the overcurrent protections and just shut off your computer in an instant. Now, seeing as Be Quiet sent over this straight power 12, 850 watt fully modular power supply, Gigabyte sent over this RTX 4080 Super, and I have Nvidia's PCAT tool to measure the actual power consumption of the GPU, let me show you what the power usage looks like. For some context, the 4080 Super has a total graphics power rating of 320 watts, but under regular usage, say benchmarking in Hitman 3 on medium settings, I'm seeing more like 200 watts. There's a fair bit of variation depending on what's on screen, but considering that it's meant to be running at 320 watts, this seems a little low. It turns out if you enable ray tracing and turn up the settings, it gets considerably more power hungry. Cyberpunk on ray tracing overdrive pushes the power consumption up to around 280 to 300 watts, although in my testing, nothing actually got close to that 320 watt rated figure. Interestingly, I was using hardware info to record data at the same time as PCADs, and while the power reported matches very well, the actual values are slightly lower than what PCAT reports. There isn't too much in it, but it is worth noting or keeping in mind that software reported values might be a touch lower or perhaps just generally less accurate than actual. So you only need like a 400 watt power supply for a 48A Super then, right? Well, no, and for several reasons. First is that the GPU isn't the only power hungry component in your PC. Your CPU is the other big draw, and looking at the same data from hardware info, you can see that adding in the CPU can spike the power required to almost 400 watts outright. This obviously doesn't include all of the other components in your system that draw power, like fans, water cooling pumps, RGB LEDs, your motherboard storage RAM, and plenty of other things. In theory, you likely could run this system from, say, a 500 watt power supply, uh, if not for those inrush current spikes. Now, both PCAT and the software reporting aren't fast enough to capture those current spikes, but as plenty of people found, especially with the 20 series GPUs when they load up your system, they instantly switch off as the power supply's overcurrent protection trips, killing all power to your rig. Now, Nvidia has seemingly improved this to a degree with the 30 and especially 40 series, but realistically, I would want a 650 to 700 watt power supply as a minimum for this system. It's also important to realize that the power consumption I've been talking about here isn't the same as the wall power. I measure that too, and while PCAT was reporting around 200 watts of power consumption from the 4080 Super, the straight power 12 was drawing around 400 watts from the wall. That's both thanks to the 100 watts or so from the CPU, uh, the other loads in the system, and also the AC to DC conversion losses. That's pretty common, and it is worth understanding that the from the wall power is always going to be higher than the internally reported figures, and it also doesn't really matter for picking the right PSU size. 
The 850 watt uh, rating that this Straight Power 12 lists is the uh, DC, so post conversion power, not 850 watts of input power. So how do you pick a power supply wattage? Well, in theory anyway, you want to look up the total graphics power for your graphics card that you want to use. In my case, that is 320 watts for this 4080 Super. And the maximum boost power, often called PL2 for Intel CPUs or PPT for AMD, of the CPU that you want to use. So that's 181 watts for this 14600K. And then add a bit of extra for the rest of the components and a little bit of headroom as well. That comes out to... Oh look, 650 to 700 watts. You might find uh, specifically with higher end GPUs, like this one actually, that you might want to upsize a touch more as well to cover for those current spikes. So more like this 850 watt unit. In practice, most GPU makers list a recommended PSU size. And so if you're building from scratch, it's worth following their guidance. Gigabyte recommends an 850 watt unit for this card. If you're upgrading your GPU and you want to make sure that your current power supply is suitable, you want to think about your usage, and it's also worth considering how good the power supply is. Is it an 80 plus platinum rated unit like this straight power 12 is, or is it just 80 plus bronze? If it's bronze or lower, you likely need a higher wattage than if it was gold, platinum, or titanium rated, as those are often better built and often more able to deal with things like those current spikes and just running closer to their maximum rating. As a final piece of advice, especially if you're building your system from scratch, it's worth getting the best quality power supply you can and oversizing the wattage a fair bit. On the quality front, as I said at the start, your power supply is connected to every single component in your system, and low quality power supplies can literally destroy your system. As for oversizing, when you inevitably want to upgrade later, having an oversized power supply will make that upgrade easier, and so it's well worth the often relatively small extra cost up front. Of course, with that said, those are my thoughts and my test results, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. And if I've missed anything or there's any other advice you would give to aspiring builders, leave that in the comments down below. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification icon. Check out plenty of other videos on the end cards when they pop up in a second. If you want to support the channel, you can buy hardware that I make myself, the open source response time tool and open source latency testing tool at osrtt.com. There's also a load of other links in the description like Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links if you want to support me there. But yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you all in the next video.